will show that everyone is here and it will be officially your attendance. So for those of you that are watching this video afterwards, welcome. It is 3.23 on Monday, I'm guessing, I think it's the 23rd. I'm really not 100% yeah. sure because, you know, we've been doing this remotely and life is kind of weird right now. But uh, what we're working on today, um, I'm very quickly going to go through the steps to solve a multiple step equation because I really want to get into uh, equations that have variables on both sides. Like this is something that has tripped us up in the past, something that has uh, been a little confusing. So if you have your notebooks out, uh, I'm gonna be working through some equations, but I, and I want you guys to help me out here and I'm gonna be calling on you, asking you what I'm gonna be doing next. So yeah, it's still class. So what we've done before, like if you watch the video, you already saw me go through this example, 4m minus, whatever, 4m minus five times the quantity 3m plus 10 equals 126. And in order to solve a multiple step equation, we said that the three steps we're really going to solve, we're really going to go through are first, uh, I'm going to get my annotation tools up. Yeah, so we distribute, we use the distributive property if necessary, we combine like terms, and then we solve. Now, what does that mean, distribute? When I'm talking about the distributive property, what am I really looking for? Mm -hmm. In order to use the distributive property, I need to, like, I see I could use it in this first example, or I can use it in 91 minus 7 times the quantity 3 minus 1. When we talk about distributive property, we're really talking about it rhymes with schmarentheses. Parentheses. Parentheses. Good job, Suki. Yes. And remember, I take the number that is outside the parentheses and multiply it by everything that is inside the parentheses. So I would multiply negative five times three M and negative five times 10, because remember I've got, I also have to look at what's in front of that number. And this subtraction sign tells me that it's a negative five. In this one, I already know it's a negative seven because it's telling me it's negative seven. So I would multiply negative seven times three A and negative seven times, what kind of one is this? Negative. A negative one. So to solve a multiple step equation, I distribute first, I combine like terms, and like terms means anything that has the same variable and the same exponent. In this, we all have the same exponents. So I'm, in this first equation, I would bring down my 4m, and then if I multiply negative five times a positive three M, that leaves me negative times positive. My answer is gonna be negative, negative 15 M. And then negative five times positive 10 gives me negative 50. I'm gonna leave it there because I really wanna look at this combined like terms step. In this expression, four M minus 15 M minus 50. I have three terms. I have 4m, I have negative 15m, and I have negative 50. Of these three, I can only combine two of them. I can combine my positive 4m and my negative 15m. So in order to do that, one is positive, one is negative, Remember, we remember our silly song, our silly, same signs, add and keep, different signs, subtract, keep the sign of the bigger number, then you'll be exact. So I have a positive four, negative 15. So I'm going to subtract 4m from 15, but I know that since 4m and negative 15m, since 15 is the bigger number and it's negative, I know my answer is also gonna be negative. So 15 minus four gives me 11. And then I keep my M. That part is important. 
when you're combining like terms, you add or subtract the coefficients, the numbers, but you keep the variable the same. Because it's like if I said that I had 15 dogs and then I got rid of four dogs, I all of a sudden don't have 11 fish or 11 cats. I still have dogs. My term is still the same. My variable is still the same. It's just the number of that variable, the amount of that variable is what changed. So I combine like terms and then I would solve. I would go through my steps of anything that I can subtract and add first, then multiply and divide second. So that's the steps to solve a multiple step equation. There's another video, actually there's a couple of videos already posted in Google Classroom on how to do that. So I'm going to skip ahead to what I really wanted to talk about today. And this is to solve equations that have variables on both sides. This is where we can sometimes get tripped up because we try to do that combining like terms uh, step, but we forget that there's an equal sign in the middle. So when it comes to solving equations that have variables on both sides, we add an extra step. We keep our get my drawing tool here. We keep our step one of distributing if necessary. Step two is the same as combining like terms. But this step three is our new step three. It's our new step. We move the variables to one side. And that's to one side of the equal sign. Now, does it matter if I move the variables all over to the left or over to the right? Does that part really matter? Does it matter which side of the equal sign I move them to? No, it does not. Correct, it does not. But that is going to affect step four, how we solve. So it doesn't matter which side of the equal sign I move the variables to when I'm combining. But remember, my goal is to get the variable by itself on one side of the equal sign and all the numbers by themselves on the other side of the equal sign. So I follow these steps, distribute, combine like terms, move the variables to one side, and then solve. So let's try this. So my first example, I've got, go right here. So in your notebooks, I want you to write this equation down. 5y minus 8 equals 3y plus 12. I forgot to get my notebook. Okay, I hear the zip, 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 zip. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. And uh, I want to thank you guys for your patience because I know that this is, this is a really weird way to do school, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Truth be told, I used to teach like this for oh. like seven years. I did not like this at all. But it was, and it was, it was interesting. It was a challenge even then. And there was a, like, I knew all my kids had computers and all of them had this and that and this and that and this and that. But I kind of like this, how it's, it's kind of forcing us all to be creative and like, I loved Giselle. I loved hearing you say that you were bored and you were like, you just want to like be able to get out and Suki, how you're saying you want to be able to get back to class and things like, I love yeah. hearing that. I love hearing that more than the, oh, mister, why am I learning this? Why are we doing this? Uh. Everybody's going stir crazy. Exactly. So this way, it's another way of us being creative and trying to kind of just learn a few things together. Like while I look, my experience teaching online is with eighth grade U.S. history. So if you want a cool lesson about the Civil War, I can help you out with that. Teaching math online is a completely new animal to me. So we're all figuring this out together. So in our notebooks, we have 5y minus 8 equals 3y plus 12. So first up, is there anything that I can use the distributive property. Is there anything that I need to distribute? Yes or no? 
No. No. So I'm just going to go ahead and cross out step one. Now I look at, first I'm going to look at this side. I'm going to put my line down through here. I'm going to look at this side of the equal sign, the left side. I'm going to make a little L and a little R just so that we can all be on the same page. Is there anything on the left side that I can combine? Does anything have the same variables? It has some. Only on the left side. Mm -mm. Nope. I have five y minus eight. I've got two terms. One has a variable. One does not. Oh. So I look at the right side. Is there anything over there that I can combine? No. No. Good job. Because I have one. I have three y. There's a variable there, but twelve does not have a variable. So there's step two. I cannot combine like terms. I'm going to move on now to step three. So I'm going to move the variables to one side or the other. And Dylan already told us that it doesn't matter if we move them to the left or to the right. So I'm looking at this equation. What I try to look for is if I have, if I'm moving variables, I look for one that has the larger coefficient. So I have a positive five Y on one side, a positive three Y on the other. So I'm going to try and combine all of my variables to the left side. So in order to do that, I have a positive three Y on one side. Opposite of positive three Y is negative three Y. And this is me coloring by holding my trackpad down with my thumb and drawing with my finger. So please be kind. So remember what I do to one side of my equal sign, I have to do the same thing to the other side of my equal sign. So 3y minus 3y leaves me with no y's on the right side. 5y minus 3y leaves me with a positive 2y on this side. So then I'm going to bring down the other terms. So I have 2y minus 8 equals positive 12. And from here, I've, since I've moved all the variables to one side, last step is to solve. And for solve, remember, I use sad, sad map. I'm finding all these, all these fun things too. So I have 2y minus 8 equals 12. In order to, like, first, I'm looking for stuff that I can subtract or add. Since I'm subtracting eight from my left side, in order to get that number, in order to get that negative eight over the equal sign to the other side, I do the opposite. And the opposite of subtraction is what? Addition. Addition. So I'm going to add eight to both sides, which leaves me negative eight and positive eight leaves me with nothing. Eight minus eight is zero. 12 plus eight is 20. And then I'm gonna bring down my two y. Leaves me with two y equals 20. I have subtracted and added. My DM stands for divide and multiply. And we all know because we are intelligent freshmen in high school that anytime you have a number next to a variable, what operation is that? Adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? Dividing. When you have a number right next to a variable. Multiplying. That is multiplying, which Giselle, the opposite of multiplying you already told us is what? Dividing. Dividing. So I divide both sides by two. So I'm going to do this one in yellow. So two divided by two is one. And we know that anything multiplied by one is itself. So I'm left with a y equals, and 20 divided by two is 10. So the way that I can check to make sure that I did everything correctly. 
if y equals 10, well, what's 5 times 10? As I write it, 5 times 10 is 50. And then 3 times 10 is 30. 30 plus 12. So 50 minus 8 is what? 42. 42. I think we should ask the Paw Patrol what 30 plus you 12. hear it in the background i'm sorry <laughs> i do hey, no, i mean you occupied they'll be there on the double so they will so 50 minus 8 is 42 and 30 plus 12 is also 42 42 which is the answer to oh. life the universe and everything so All that's the, numbers that's the way that we check to make sure that what we've done is correct that we have followed all the steps that last step that's not even written down here i, I could write it five uh let's see if you replace the variable with the answer then it should work out so I replaced the Y up here with 10. And I replaced this Y with 10 and found out that 42 really does equal 42. Aren't numbers awesome? It is kind of all work out together. So you guys ready to do one more? Yes. Yeah. Right, gonna, <clears throat> yeah. You have all of these steps written down already? Yes. Uh, all right. Yes. Yeah. I am running out of space, so I'm going to clear my drawings back to here. So I've got two more options. Which one would you guys like to see? 7k equals 3k minus 36, or 6x plus 14 equals 12x minus 8x? 6x. I mean, negative 6x. Negative 6x? Yes. All right. Let's do that one then. You know what? Let's see. Okay. Negative 6x plus 14 equals 12 minus 8x. And I'd be in great shape if my cat would stop laying on my notebook. <laughs> well, you know, we, uh, we, we do what we can. I was trying to do a chat earlier with my daughter screaming, and that just it didn't work out so well. So first step, is there anything in here, I'm just going to put lines so we know which one we're working with. Is there anything that I can distribute? Do I see any parentheses? No. No parentheses. So I'm going to just cross that one out. If I look at where my equal sign is, and I combine every, anything on the left side. Yeah. No, 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 no. I have a negative 6x, so I have a coefficient and a variable, plus 14, which is a constant. Remember, a number by itself, if it doesn't have a variable, it's called a constant. I'm going to, I'm going to continue to use these terms until they are just like so stuck in your head that they're automatic. So I can't combine anything on the left side. What about the right side? Do I have any coefficients and variables that I can combine. No. Nothing. I have 12, which is a constant, and 8x, which is a coefficient variable. So I cannot combine any like terms. So I went through step two already. On to step three, move variables to one side. Now I'm gonna let you guys choose. Do we want to move the variables to the right side or to the left side? To the right, the right. You want to move the variables to the right? Okay, we'll do that. So I have a negative 6x on the left side. In order to get rid of that negative 6x, the opposite of negative 6 is positive 6. So I'm going to add 6x to both sides. 6x. So negative 6x plus a positive 6x leaves me with 
zero x. And then over here, I have negative eight x plus positive six x. Do our silly song again. Same signs add and keep different signs subtract. Keep the sign of the bigger number, then you'll be exact. So I have negative eight, positive six. Keep the sign of the bigger number, which is bigger, eight or six? Eight. Eight is bigger, so since eight is negative, I know my answer is gonna be negative. Eight minus six is two. And then I'm gonna bring down my x, because I have eight x minus six x leaves me with two x. Zzz. I'll bring down my, my 12, and then on this side of the equal sign, I'm gonna bring down my positive 14. And then from here, what am I gonna do first? Make a little. Yeah, I, like the, I like the yellow, so. <clears throat> In order to solve, we already did move variables from one side. I now have a two-step equation. So when we're solving equations with variables, remember we use SADMEP. Honestly, we really only use SADM. We don't even use the EP, but we throw that on there because I like that it's kind of a palindrome. So I look on the side where I have my variable, and on the, for this time, it is on the right side. So remember, I'm trying to get the variable by itself on the right side. So in order to do that, I need to get all of the numbers over to the left. Which number can I get to the left first, 2 or 12? Twelve. 12. So the 12 on the right side is positive. So the opposite of positive 12 is what kind of 12? Negative. Negative 12. So I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. 12 minus 12 gives me zero. I'm running out of room here. I'm gonna bring down my negative two x, excuse me, negative two x. And then 14 minus 12, same signs add and keep, different signs subtract, keep the sign of the bigger number, then you'll be exact. 14 is bigger than 12. This is just straight up subtraction. 14 minus 12 is dos. So I'm left with negative 2x equals 2. I subtracted and added. What am I going to do next, Giselle? Do what? Don't you have to divide it? You do have to divide. I'm dividing what though? Negative 2x. By what? 2. What Negative kind of 2? Two? Two. Negative 2. Yeah. And then whatever I do to the right side of the equal sign, I have to also do to the left side of the equal sign. So I'm going to bring my my answer over here a little bit. So negative two divided by negative two is one, which leaves me, leaves the x by itself. And then two divided by a negative two is what kind of a one? A negative one. Negative one. Why are you correct? Because you are. Because the two was like, Let's look at oh. let's look at this little guy right here. I'm running out of space. Two divided by negative two. When you have two numbers that you're either multiplying or dividing, if they have the same sign, the answer is positive. So if these were so like if this was two divided by positive two, if it was if they were both positive, my answer would be positive. We see that over here, negative two divided by negative two left me with a positive one. 
but if you have different signs and you're either multiplying or dividing, different signs means that my answer is going to be negative. So that same signs add and keep, that only counts for addition and subtraction. When we're multiplying and dividing, if we have different signs, our answer is negative, but if we have the same sign, our answer is positive. And it doesn't matter if those same signs are positive signs or if they're negative signs. If they have the same sign, the whole answer is going to be positive. Excuse me. So now it's your turn. So this is the part where you guys get to try. So in your notebooks, I have six different equations. And because you guys were so awesome and you came to my virtual class and there's more than just one of you here, I'm gonna let you choose either the odds or the evens. <coughs> I'm gonna leave this page up and I'll send you guys also the, uh, these equations. I want you to, in your notebooks, write down either the odd number, so either one, three, five, or two, four, six. And we're going to use these same, same steps. Remember, you distribute if necessary, you combine like terms, move the variables to one side, and then you solve. And as I look at, I look at these equations, there's at least one where I'm going to have to use the distributive property and at least one where I'm going to have to combine like terms. Remember when combining like terms, that means these two have to happen on each side of the equal sign before we even start moving things back and forth. Sorry, we did take out from Cracker Barrel the other night and I had a biscuit left over, so that's my snack. Biscuits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when they do their work, Mr. Humner, they're just taking a picture and posting it on Google Classroom, or you have this posted on Google Classroom for them to solve? I will have, um, I'm gonna put this recording up there as well, but sorry, biscuit. No, that's okay. <laughs> that, was not, that was not smart. That's like trying to eat a handful a of crackers. Snack, no liquid. Mm. Ah, yeah. So I'm also going to have, I'll, I, I will share this slide with you guys too in Google Classroom. So like I'll have the, the video and the slide. I've been doing that for problems of the day. I've been doing that for the lessons that I have, that I have posted. I have like the lesson video and then also the exact slide that has the equations on it, the things that I want you to work on. So I'll share this specific slide with you and you can either work on it right on the slide if you know good with like typing or um, take a picture of your notebook with the completed answer because I really do want to see the steps that you're following. I want to make sure that you're following all of those steps, distributing if necessary, combining like terms, moving the variables to one side, and then solving. And if you, I'm only going to say this in the video, I'm not going to say it but if you also go back and show me how you put your answer in and prove that it is the correct answer, I will give you bonus points for that too. So that's like mm -hmm. that extra added step that no one else is going to be privy to. So I like that to be the incentive. So I will share this slide with you too, but I'm going to actually stop the recording part of this now. So anybody that's watching this in the future, I'm glad I had a chance to share a little bit with you about equations with variables on both sides. Um, if you do have questions, we're gonna be moving on from here to literal equations, and then from there back into slope, slope intercept, and I've been finding some pretty cool stuff that we can do online with slope and slope intercept and graphing and all that stuff, but that's for the future. So recording is going to end now. <laughs>